All right, it's good to see you guys. Thanks for being here. Uh, coming off a great week for us, where it was a tough stretch, three games in five days, and two of those on the road. Uh, beat USC here last Wednesday. Played really well. Uh, scored 91 points. I can't remember how many they have, but we won pretty convincingly. And then went down to Stanford with very little prep. Uh, they were ready for us. And, uh, you know, defending national champion, number two in the country. Uh, we were in it for the first half, and then the second half just got away from us. Uh, and then bounced back and beat Cal in overtime on Sunday. Uh, we were without Jenna Johnson, one of our leading scorers and, and starters. Um, so we really haven't been at full strength because Drew Gilton has been out. So to come up with a win uh, after a tough stretch there is great. And then you know, we, we get a little bit of rest here. I think everyone was really tired Sunday coming home. Um, so yesterday they got a little light work in, got today off, and then start getting ready for USC again uh, at USC on Friday, at UCLA on Sunday. So two weeks left. Um, we could finish as high as fourth. We're in fourth right now, and as low kind of as as eighth. Ever there's a lot of jockey to be. Uh, These two weeks are really important. There's a lot of um, things that could happen. There's things that we need to have happen, and other teams are in the same boat. So. These are, you know, one at a time, uh, big games, uh, but it's also really exciting. In the middle of February, you're playing for something, and uh, we continue to be in the mix for the NCAA tournament. And if it was tomorrow, we'd be in it. Uh, but again, a lot can happen between now and then, and then with the Pac-12 tournament. So we've got uh, some fun stuff to play for, um, and it's it's kind of it's crazy that the season's kind of winding down, but it's it's kind of gearing up as well. So there's a a new kind of heightened um, the, the target's in sight, you can see it, and you know, you're really going to sharpen up and clean some things up, but it's a, it's a fun time to be playing for something. Trust when you played in overtime. So, yeah, it's kind of close one like that. We, we did not play our best on Sunday. Again, like I said, I think we were just tired. It wasn't for lack of... Desire. It wasn't like they were, you know, we, we didn't walk on the court and think that it was going to be easy, but we just looked a little tired. We turned it over more than we should have. Um, we were down 22 to 11, I think, after the first quarter. And then we, we the second quarter, we won 24 to 8 or 24 to 6, something like that. So we did a good job. We were up at half. And then, um, yeah, I think it's great to win a close one, especially when you don't play your best. And just to you know, truly find a way, and that's what they did. And um, you know, Kennedy McQueen did a tremendous job on their best player, um, Jada Curry. She just did a great job. Kept her under her average, and and kept her off the free throw line. And then Gianna's just a killer. She's just fearless, and scored the last seven points in overtime, and had some key defensive rebounds, and um, that was awesome to see. So. Uh, that's a good way to win, and again, without one of our starters. So yesterday, you may have noticed you're starting to get some votes in the in some of the polls. Why do you think it's kind of, I don't know if you call it respect or attention or publicity is, is slow to come, given that you have a really solid net ranking? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that we get much um, publicity, to be honest with you. Like, I, I don't think we're getting much hype. Um, and I'm not one for, you know, self-hype. <laughs> We're not going to self-aggrandize. But um, I think that, and I think we need to make the tournament and, and kind of put ourselves on the national scene um, nationwide for us to kind of be legit, uh, legitimized, I should say. Uh, so it's on us. Uh, you know, winning helps. And, and But you're right. It hasn't been much, but maybe that's good. Our team is young, and uh, I prefer to play the underdog anyway. Uh, especially with youth. Um, so hopefully this year, you know, if we can finish strong, we can make the tournament and, um, you know, snowball effect with – with because that all helps in recruiting and everything too. You know, we need we need that to legitimize ourselves nationally with those high-level recruits that we're recruiting. How would you characterize this team maybe compared to some of the re most recent teams you've had? What are some of the words you use to describe this group? That's a good question. They're different in, in a lot of ways. Um, I will be honest and say, like, this is the most fun group I've had in years. 
um, even before I came to Utah. Like, they're just really, really fun to coach. Um, and I don't, this isn't one word, but the one thing that's different is every day they show up the same. And so maybe consistent. Um, you know, we've had some tough losses on the road. We've been tired, whatever. And the next morning, we practice in the morning. The next morning at 8.30, they show up exactly the same as if we had won by 20. Um, they're coachable. Uh, there's no pushback. They buy, you know, they're, they're, they're coachable, they're bought in, and um, they're humble but confident. Um, and then there's just no selfishness. So as much as every player wants to start in the country, every player wants to be, you know, the one. Um, they want to win more than anything. So uh, that part's been really fun. It's refreshing to coach that, especially in this day and age. Um, it's not the norm, and I know that, and I'm trying to, you know, enjoy it and slow down time because it's, it's coming down to an end. I noticed Br Bryn is closing in on 1,000 points for her career would be the 30th player in history to do that. Has she kind of had to take a different role this year with the emergence of your freshman and how she kind of doing in that regard? Yeah, she, Bryn is awesome. I mean, she's just, she, you know, more than anyone is competitive. And yes, it's been a little bit of an adjustment for her. And, and that's not easy for any player, especially when you come off being like the one to be asked to do some different stuff. Um, it's a challenge. And, and she's been really mature about it. And um, like case in point, you know, when, when somebody like that accepts their role, then no one else really has any room to, to do it differently. Um, but she's still one of the best shooters in the country. Uh, and, you know, I told her yesterday, you're still going to win us a game at some point soon with your ability. So, yeah, I think it's been a challenge for her, but one she's managed really, really well. And um, she's, you know, her shot, we don't have anybody on our team that shoots more than nine shots a game, but yet we average the most points in the conference and we still have the most efficient offense in the country. So that speaks to the balance. So nobody really is the man or the woman. Uh, and so it's easier to accept that role, I think, maybe. Um, but she's done a phenomenal job. And she's still just as critical to us. She's probably still our most critical scorer. Um, and, you know, I will never, ever stop calling her number when we need a bucket. Uh, she's, you know, she's just that good. And then do you expect Jenna and Drew back? Uh, you mentioned that. Yeah, so played. Drew is finally off minute restriction. Although I haven't talked to her today, assuming she feels good, she truly is kind of day to day um, with her hip, and uh, so that's great. Jenna, I don't know, so she's she's had some foot pain and injury, soft tissue stuff that she's just not able to play through at this point. Um, so she played against USC in the first half was tremendous. We pulled her at halftime because she just couldn't get warm again. Uh, Stanford on Friday, same thing, played in the first half. Halftime came up to me and said, I can't play. So then we just decided to shut her down for a while. Um, so hopefully she'll be back this weekend, but I really honestly don't know. Uh, but Drew will be back. And Drew actually at Cal got her 500th career assist. So one of, I think she's on fifth on the list, um, which is a huge accomplishment. And um, she's chasing Erica Bean, who played for me my first four years here. So... Uh, she was talking about that yesterday. So they're good friends, so she was just talking about that. So that's a great accomplishment, 500 assists in quite a list. Um, so hopefully, you know, by Pac-12 tournament, at the latest, we get, we're at full health. Um, that would be great. <laughs> and just finally, you play four straight road games. Was yeah. that set or is that COVID-related? No, that was set. Okay. Is that common? To, no. Okay. Just <laughs> No, it isn't. Take it up with the league office. Yeah, kind of they yeah. Uh, they don't respond to my calls on that. It's kind of weird. They don't uh, Yeah, so it just it's the short straw and sometimes you get it. I think um, one other I mean Colorado obviously has the same thing, but it is what it is. Like again, uh, can't control what you can't control and I I choose to not think about it because I can't do anything about it. So, um, yeah, so hopefully this is not a recurring issue, um, but not much I can do about it. We just play the games and do the best we can. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Just can you tell me about how the morale of the team is going? You guys keep saying you're right there, not on the door, and just all these close, lo close losses. What are they doing to the morale of the team and just kind of the vibe in the locker room? You know, I think overall it's, you know, it's, it's good. Everyone is still, you know, positive that we're going to, that we can turn this around, that we can get, get going still. You know, we have three weeks of regular season and then the tournament. Um, but, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, we, it's hard losing games, and especially when you have a lead and we kind of let that slip away at the end of games. Um, but overall, we're doing, the team is good, and we're continuing to just uplift each other, and no one's uh, in negative spirits and uh, bad-mouthing one another. So it's been, it's been good. What guys have kind of emerged? As there's obviously eight newcomers. Who's kind of the maybe the voice of the locker room? Um, I mean, I think everyone has had a voice so far. Like everyone has input to give. Um, you know, probably some people more than others. Marco Anthony's a, a big one for us. He's always uh, talking, always um, encouraging. But I think overall, for the most part, people have just been not holding back and just willing to share their thoughts and opinions. Health-wise, how are you? Do you feel like you're you're back, or you're still with everything that's happened to you? You're still trying to reach that pinnacle of health. Yeah, no, I think uh, obviously I'm getting back. I'm like very. I think I'm really close. I don't think I was there before. You know, everything happened with COVID when I had COVID and then appendicitis. But I would say I'm I'm right back there, and I'm just I'm super close. And I think it's just going to continue to get better from there. Do you? Uh, do you keep in contact with any of the players that left at all? Do they text you or do you text them, like Fonz or Timmy or uh, Ian or any of those I guys? mean, every once in a while. I don't really keep in, like, that much contact. Like, before the season, maybe a bit. But now I'm just I'm worried about my season right now and our team. So I'm not talking too much to them at this moment. Do you guys find yourself looking toward kind of March and, and saying, what you really plan for right now is momentum, and that these losses, although painful, aren't really devastating because they're not knocking you off the bubble or anything like that. Do you feel like you can play free and easy that way? Yeah, I think so. I think we just we go in with the mindset, you know, we just we've already lost, you know, so many games. Like we just got to go out and c keep competing, keep working hard. Um, and now we just think our time is is just right around the corner, and we can make a, a big run. What do you think your own game you've kind of improved the most this season? Sorry, say that again. Your own game. What do you think you? What are you most proud of, or what do you think you've made strides in this season? No, I, I'm not so sure. I think I've just overall I've just taken steps forwards in multiple aspects. I think I'm just playing at a more confident level that I have been in the past. That has really just kind of helped my game from this year to, to last year. I've talked to you about this before, but you were talking to Evan Batty. Just, I don't know, and you smiled. And I don't know what, what, what was going on there. You, and do you talk that much to opposing centers? Uh, I don't know. It's just Evan Batty, he's a good guy. You know, we talked a, a lot at the, uh, what's it called? The Pac-12 Media Day. Um, and he's, he's a great guy. So we just, I can't remember what we, we said a lot of things back and forth every once in a while. But, you know, he's a good guy and just had, had a little laugh right there. So, Who's the, who's the best trash talker in the league or who's the best talker that you've ran across? Maybe uh, even not in the league, just in your. I don't know. I, I don't know who's the best trash talker because I haven't really heard any good ones. But the one who talks the most is probably Matthews from Washington. He's probably been the one that when, when we're next to each other, he tries to tries to talk a little trash to me when I'm right next to him. So. Uh -huh. As far as going out on the road again, is that taxing on you guys or? In to this day and age, is not that big a deal to jump on a plane. And I, I think we're used to it. You know, we we're just on so many planes these days. It just doesn't matter that much. And like we like playing at home. We like the home court advantage as well. But you know, we're not bothered to go out again and to go play some some good teams and hopefully get a road sweep this week. The Colorado game, you you had touched the ball a lot. You had the ball a lot. You only went to the free throw line once. Mm -hmm. It was one for two. Is that something that needs to happen more? You need to get to line more? I yeah, I think so. I mean, I think I just got to be more aggressive in attacking um, the defenders in order to get those foul calls. But yeah, I think I need to get to the, to the line more in order to you know, possibly help our team a bit. And then, you know, we talked, you, you made some strides of putting on weight, then you got sick. Did, did you just lose all that kind of 
Uh, is yeah, I was. I've kind of. I'm kind of back to where I, I'm getting back up. I'm still a few pounds under from where I, I was, but yeah, I know with COVID, I, I lost a few pounds, gained that back, and then appendicitis, I lost a lot um, with that one. Um, but I'm getting back there. So. And finally, what's the best high school in Utah, and why is it Bingham? Yeah, Bingham, they, <laughs> they're doing good this year. You know, they're yeah. good. They're having, good, having a good season. So. We're we're both Bingham guys. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Miners. Go Miners, man. Just, just like Park City, right? Is that what Park City is? Is that what Park City is? Yeah. Wow. All right. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Good to see everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. We find out who's dedicated and who's not. I, I know there's a lot more people in uh, November and December. <laughs> Go ahead. Just when you guys reconvened, I assume you reconvened Monday after Saturday's close loss. What, 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 just what was the morale of the guys? What, are you guys getting down at all? Is this affecting them in any way? You know, um, that was a huge concern of mine, quite frankly, um, after the game. I mean, just the, you know, we let it for, what, 35 minutes or maybe not quite close to that. Um, and uh, so I was concerned about that, you know, and, and certain, you know, we played certain guys a, a lot of minutes that night and um, not by design, it's just, we were going with the guys we felt like were producing the most uh, at that, that time. So, you know, we, we spent the night in Denver on Saturday and left early Sunday morning, you know, the 5.30 a.m. wake-up call and got back here just shortly after 10. And, and that's all, you know, we watching the film. What do we need to get better? But what is, what is our mindset going to be like when we come to practice on Monday is the biggest thing I kept thinking about. And, and it was interesting. Mondays are always a really busy day, personally. Um, probably the busiest day of the week in a lot of respects. And um, um, when we got here, we had 10 guys in the arena in the practice facility working out uh, with, a, with a coach on their own, though. You know what I mean? And 45 minutes ahead of time doing their deal, whether they're getting shots up, working on their ball handling, working on their uh, whatever it is, free throw shooting, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so that was – that fired me up. Like, I was super pumped about that. And we had a great mindset in film. You know, you can tell a lot, a lot of times in film when you're standing up, we go over some things where I'm looking at the team, go over some, um, um, like, how many blow-bys did we have? And, you know, how was our offense rebounding? And how was our conversion defense, et cetera, et cetera. But you get a good visual of the guys, who's slouching, whose shoulders are perked up, who's locked in, who's yawning, you know, all those things. And uh, I was really excited. And, so we, we watched film on us for about 45 minutes, and then the guys went to lift, and, and we had a shorter practice, but I thought we had a very good practice. So uh, I was very, very encouraged by our mentality and our mindset yesterday, and hopefully it's the same today and tomorrow. Are you one of those coaches that harp, harp on free throws, or are you one of those that say the less you talk about it, the, the, the less it becomes a problem? Yeah, I, I would, get, I would say I'm probably on the side where we don't talk about it a whole lot, but we do talk about getting fouled. We do talk about the value of winning the free throw battle. So we always want to play hard without being fouled. At the same time, we want to get to the line. And that's something traditionally we've been very good at. I'd, I'd say we're okay at it here. I don't think we're elite. We're not terrible. Um, um, so we haven't talked much about it at all, even when we were number, what, I think we were as high as number three in the country in free throw percentage. And I saw today we're 15, I think. Um, but no, we don't talk a whole lot about that. And 
we've shot it. I mean, over the years, we've been a very good free throw shooting team at every stop. And obviously this year we've been uh, at an elite level. What have you seen from Brandon this year as far as improvement and, and given all that he's dealt with and, and, and has that kind of slowed his, his uh, development? <clears throat> well, you know, going back, he's, he's been dynamite. I think the world of Brandon as a person, as a young man, and what he stands for and what he's about. From the day uh, we got hired, that guy's been all in from the get-go. And whether it was individual workouts last spring, certainly then we had a little break in there and then the eight weeks that we can work our guys out over the summer where he put on roughly i think 11 or 12 pounds uh was really looking good physically was playing at a high level you could see his confidence going through the roof and you could we could all see that um you know in november uh the way he was playing and he was dominant in every way he was dominant on the defensive end he was dominant on the offensive end and then obviously he just hit a string of bad luck i mean really <laughs> everything out of his control and you feel bad for him um, because that's one thing you can't control. Obviously you do everything you can with stretching and mobility and uh, strength and doing all those kind of things. But ankle injuries are a part of the game. Then he was obviously in the protocols, uh, another ankle, and then he had the appendectomy. And so what do you, I mean, who, how many guys get an appendectomy? It's just a fluke thing. So of course it's going to hinder your development. I mean, we take a lot of pride in skill development and we don't just do it in the off season. We spend a good portion of our practice every single day on skill development, shooting, passing, dribbling, right? All those sorts of things. And we put, we dedicate time to that. And so when you lose all that time, I mean, last week was his first full week of practice since November, which is just, in, which is incredible when you, when you really think of it. So to, for him to be able to go out and do what he did against Colorado, for example, a career high, I think he went two for three from the three, you know, whatever he had at halftime, 18 or 21 or whatever it was, I just think shows you what he is capable of doing. Imagine what he can do when he starts to get some continuity. And, you know, he's out there and he's lost however much weight, 10 pounds, let's say. It might even be a little bit more than that. And his conditioning isn't nearly what it would have been, right, if he had all that time. So for him to be able to do that and play 35 or 34 minutes or whatever it was, like that speaks volumes to BC and how far he's come and what he's able to do. But, you know, the one thing I've said, and I, I think I said this about a month ago, he is, he loves this school. He loves this athletic department. He loves this basketball program. And he has been steadfast with that. He has been as tough as nails. And, and he's shown a discipline and a toughness um, to himself, and I think it shows on the floor. So I always find it interesting when I've covered a football team that's been an independent, so once they lose a couple games, they can't play. Well, obviously, they can't win a conference tournament, right. conference championship. Is there such a thing with your team as just the pride of just why, if someone asks, why are you playing, is it just – because you, you play to win, you, you have that pride. Do you still see that in your team? With 100%. Going okay. I mean, it, it's just when you look back at what the last, uh, I mean, how many games have come down to literally the last possession or Colorado last 10 seconds, right? And I think it's been four of them, right? And then we beat Oregon State and we got handled pretty, you know, Washington State handled us pretty well. And then that USC game was in there. So, um, I mean, I think we're playing with a lot of pride as a team. I mean, I think you see a few individuals go a little bit up and down. Um, and it's, you know, um, at the end of the day, like we, put our, we are a member of the Pac-12. And when you look at the world of basketball, the world, I'm not just talking college basketball, we play in one of the best leagues in the world. And there's only a select few student athletes or people Right, regardless of whatever sport you're in, that have the privilege and, and the distinction to be able to do that uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And there should be a lot of pride in that. And, you know, you look around our league, there's some teams doing, being, you know, ranked in the top five, and there's some teams struggling. But I think the common theme you see with a lot of these teams is just guys are competing and competing and competing. And certainly it's no different than with our team. And that's why I say when we had... 10, 10 guys, we only have 14 guys on our team, right? Boston's hurt, so um, so really 13 that can participate, 
participate in practice. We have 10 guys there on their own getting extra work in 45 minutes ahead of time. And we talked about BC. BC was in yesterday morning getting 500 shots up um, on his own. And so, um, so losing sucks, but I love the mentality and I love what this team has been able to do in terms of a mentality standpoint. We just got to burst through the door. Where, where do you find the strike the balance between uh, obviously looking toward next year and basically finishing out this year strong? I haven't. I mean, I've thought about next year all the time from the standpoint of recruiting because recruiting never stops. But I haven't even thought about that stuff. Like everything that we've done for this year is for this year's team. And we're trying to win and be as successful as we can today, tomorrow, against Stanford on Friday and against Cal. And, um, and so I'm excited about our future. I think we got some really good young players that are just going to keep growing and developing and getting better. Um, obviously, we need to add some pieces, but haven't thought at all about that kind of stuff. We're just trying to lock into how do we be our best, you know, and find a way to win against Stanford. And going back, Jay, too, you had that question. You know, you're right. In football or in some other sports, when you lose a couple games or whatever – you know, now they can still play in different bowl games, right? We still have three weeks of our regular season, five games, and and then that extra week with the, the Pac-12 tournament. So we have four guaranteed weeks to play. But nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows what's going to happen, you know, four weeks from now. And I've, we've, we've all seen it. I mean, we can name different. Georgetown, I think, finished last place last year, won their conference tournament. Oregon State finished whatever, won the conference. So you just never know. And, you know, are the odds against us? Yeah. But this, that's what makes this game so, so great. And so I think we got a group of fighters that have demonstrated that. And now we just got to learn how to win. And then playing Stanford for the first time this late, um, what do they present? Uh, what do you maybe, what has to happen yeah. for you guys to beat Stanford? Yeah, it's rare, I think. And maybe, maybe it's not in the Pac 12, but to be able to, to play Stanford for the first, first time, and it's the only time we're playing them after. Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way, guys. Um, uh, so it is different. You know, it's kind of bizarre. You're sitting there watching. It was like, you know, you just got done watching everybody. Although Colorado was first time as well, our last game. So they're, they're, a, they're a very talented team. Um, they're an excellent rebounding team. And they're just really, really versatile. And, I mean, they, can, they have, what, three or four guys that will play the two, the three, or the four. And one guy that'll play one, two, three, or four uh, in Ingram, who's who's I mean a very very good player. Period, but also but he's also a freshman. So they have great length, they have great size uh, up and down their lineup. They might not be the biggest per se, like at the five spot, but when you line them up two, three, four, and five, they have they're huge. And obviously, we're not that big. Um, from a, just a physicality standpoint. So we're going to have to do a great job in the glass. We're going to have to really try to keep them out of, you know, off the offensive boards and just keep them one and out. And then because of their length, they can be difficult to score on, uh, to get easy baskets on. It's hard to get offensive rebounds on them. Um, it's hard to score in the paint on them consistently. And so you got to be able to make some shots uh, when you go against them. That's all for me. All right. Thanks, guys. I like this.